Are they still arguing? Let's go see. If my mood gets soiled from these fools, I swear to God! I oh. don't know, because he wouldn't kill anyone here if hey. he had a been unless he had a vendetta. Hi. Are you- have you guys been arguing this entire time? Oh, no. We've- Part of we, it. We were arguing, and then we got better, and then I gave Swan a, a very a solid hug and a tooth. And then Swan is now questioning my moral decisions, as is my little my group of blossoms, because my my blossoms think that I do ha not have survival skills, which I do. I do have survival skills. I know how to build a fire. I know how to clean water. I think it's survival skills of preserving your own life against other human beings. Well, I guess not everyone's human here. Okay, so other people. Are you Sorry. guys in a good enough mood to enjoy the festival now? I could consider it. Okay. Then, if that's the case, let's go have some fun, okay? Yippee! I can stop talking about Casey. Oh my gosh! He's got Casey's going with with him. Do you I know who know Casey who... is? No, I don't know who. He murdered me. Oh There's my! Okay, he's murdered There's coffee. Okay. There's, coffee. Um, There's coffee up here, guys. There's coffee. Were they still I mean, arguing? They well, kind of. Um. It was, we were it was we were arguing for realsies and then we started bickering and then we got better and then we got bickering again. Fantastic. So, oh my god, you two sound like Meanwhile, I couple. just witnessed exactly. a beautiful love Never story. Never say that again. Anyway, coffee. What? Love is in the air, Swan. Coffee. <laughs> Wait, what did you oh say? Oh my god. <laughs> As you approach the coffee stand, you need to stop being funny. As you approach the coffee stand, you see that Amir and Strahd had just received their own drinks. Strahd stumbles and actually spills the coffee on onto Amir's top. He, counting characteristically, begins to fret, looking rather stressed out at the incident. Strahd quickly goes to grab nap napkins, muttering a something about something about it being his fault. He obviously seems to not be having a good time, which causes Swan to frown. Dan's idea of pushing them together seemed to be going terribly, as you've never seen your boss act in such a manner. And now he potentially harmed the very man that he was interested in. See, this is why you don't push people into things. Dan glances over to the two, watching as Strahd attempts to make up for what he did. He feels kind of bad for a moment. That was until you glance up at, he gl you glance up at a mirror. You point to Swan to look at the larger man. Yeah, but look. It looks like the situation wasn't as bad as it initially looked, because while Strahd frantically tried to make things right, Amir is smiling as he looks at him. He watches the lieutenant fret and walk back and forth, as if the man was giving the most import important speech in the world. You can't hear their conversation, but you see Amir say something to the other. This eventually causes him to stop, look at the two, and then start to laugh. The Undanian joins him in his endeavor, before gesturing to the another drink on the counter. It appears that the barista had already remade the drink that Strad had spilled. Despite the stress bubbling over and causing an incident, it seemed that everything was fine in the end. Dan, you felt bad that you were likely the cause of the fumbling. And Swan, you realized that even if something bad did happen, Amir seemed to settle Strad's worries quite easily. Maybe you both had a point in your different approaches. They do look happy, though, despite everything. Aww. <gasps> Love is in the air for realsies! How am I supposed to you get did, tough now? You did not just say for real seas. <laughs> like, look, me teaching Kitty poggers was pretty far, but you didn't just say for real seas. Look, I, I just witnessed, uh, I just witnessed two love I stories in one night, okay? I'm really, I'm in a good mood. That's it to torment me. Yeah, Remember, and I really funny. hope he is not spreading the the, the word hey, to root root other root? people around. I, I don't want that. I think I think it's, I think more fun to watch. It's like spreading the Lord's name. No, it's good. It's a good thing. I may I say, "Oh Lordy," but I don't want it spread. Oh Lordy, look at all these fish stands. I actually never got a chance to look at all these really cool stands. I gotta go. I have to feel like the time. Good. I feel like good. also strange because there's be so many back. different smells oh, and yeah. I don't know what to think. Yeah. Oh, what? bye! I didn't process you leaving. I'm sorry. Oh my gosh. Well, she's in a better mood. That's good. <laughs> it is kind I of. I, 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 I can decide not here. to be. Oh. 
What? Bro. Yeah, I can say one thing to make her mad right now. Oh my god, please do not! I just want this to be a happy good night, okay? I'll- I Where's she? Where's she? Where's she? Where's she? Where's she? Dan gave me a hug. You should give me a hug. Okay. Maybe we can find Swan today. I mean, Swan did go. I'm, I only heard a little bit of it because my leg was broken and I had to go home. But she did have that thing. My leg was broken and I you had to go home. You can't just casually oh, say wow. that. That's a wonderful thing. How was your you leg fixed? fixed? It, it was true. I don't know how it got fixed. <laughs> Mercy, I actually really do not know. Did you die in your sleep or something? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe I had a heart attack. Oh, oh my god. Dude. Supposedly a bit young to be having that. Knows, but what do I know? I'm also very stressed all the Maybe time. Maybe someone came into your window and murdered you. Be the Not again. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> As you continue to peruse the markets, you soon see large barrels full of different spices. The scent is a little overwhelming to you, but you can't help but admire the different vibrant colors in front of you. You proceed to look over the selection, as there is quite a lot to choose from. The seller perks up upon seeing your interest. These mixes are all homemade. They say proudly. I brought them here all the way from Gaia, so you know they're gonna be good. <laughs> You're from Gaia? The seller nods enthusiastically before reaching up to pull their hair back, pull back their hair. You didn't notice them, but it appears they have some deer horns that just had fallen off. You can only get the best herbs these days from Gaia, I say. I, I'm just happy I was able to get everything here in one piece. After all, people in Erwin need to enhance their culinary expertise with spice blends. The person seems rather proud of their accomplishments as they speak to you. However, they are soon distracted by someone else approaching the booth. You watch as they easily make a sell of their special blue blend. And you can't help but wonder, what sort of plants were in Gaia to make such a thing? Do you think they keep their like antlers after they fall off to like display? Sorry, that was really weird. What were we talking about before? I was looking at the blue blend. <laughs> The blue no, like blend? before that. Were we the on a different blend. conversation? What is this? There's two. There's like two types of blue blend. That looks like my hair. It is your hair. Look, well, it's, it's, same your hair. it's not in a braid. I can, it's hard to hold it up for comparison. <laughs> That's what they make it out of. Your hair. No. Is it? Is this what you use to color it? I, I don't color my hair. It came this way. Uh, you color It's your made hair. out of this. Fell from right? the sky and all, and I was blue. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. It, 100 no, it gave me such a start. Stuff. You don't understand. I went through a whole like battlefield. It was a training exercise, but like I thought it was. And you know, they're they're like, why? Who are you? Why are you here? And I then they're like, you know, that blue-haired person did this, and I'm like, blue hair. I looked at my hair and I screamed. Look at mushrooms. <laughs> Oh, wait, this is I want, I want, yeah, I want one of these guys. Look at them. I want the blue one. Oh, I need this. Wasn't that at the Oasis? The... I'm not, never mind. I'm now, You're right. I'm now sad. You're so I'm now right. very sad. I'm now very upset. Steal, I mean, we can go and try to find the Oasis thing and steal that. I, I mean, uh, I don't know. You know what? That's, a, that's. <laughs> they might have abandoned I think they, I think that place is abandoned, yeah. Free stuff. Free stuff. You knock down all the lights. I, <laughs> I, 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 I you know, how am I supposed right to have mind. deniability from this if I'm hearing this conversation? Oh dear God! Oh yeah, it's the clown around town. Huh? They kind of had a, a funky little outfit. I mean, look at it. It's got so many colors. What's I mean, they so kind of—they're not coordinated like at all. I actually have a lot to say about it, but like you know. It's just... A clown approaches you, and you can't help but feel a chill run up your spine. Last time you faced this beast, they had riddled you during the baking competition. You were insulted by the small yellow flower on their person, and it absolutely drenched you with water. Dan, you gotta move behind Swan and Marshy, attempting to make them into a human shield. Hey! What? The clown is growing closer and closer. You brace yourself for what it might do. The clown finally stops in front of your group and gives their red nose a few earnest squeezes. It makes a honking noise. Marshy and Swan, you continue to look between... You continue to look between Dan and the clown, trying to figure out what, what strangeness you're currently witnessing. I... wait, Dan, are you afraid of clowns? Marshy laughs and Dan's face goes red. I'm not! Why <laughs> well, can't have a check on seeing the man, the man who has died, mind you, attempting to hide behind them? 
Oh. They're harmless. I mean, look at how cute their outfit is. See, those it's are like flowers. Guy, yeah. guy. I mean, like, come on. Is this? Is, that's not, there's nothing wrong here. Swan goes to turn where the clown was standing, but suddenly the clown has vanished. You glance <gasps> frantically from left to right to see where they must have walked off to, but every direction is clear of the colorful individual. They're just gone. What the? Get away, get away, get away, get away, get away. Oh, oh, get away. Oh, 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 you know, when I told when I told Satea I was going to try to be more confident, I I didn't expect it would have to be in the face of vanishing clowns. Hello? I wonder if this is where the alley that I was kidnapped. In. What? Never mind. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you the in this most alleyway in the first place? Alleyway no, I've ever <laughs> seen in my life. No, I don't think it actually was. Sorry. I just Wait, are, had did, memories. were you just in the alleyway, or was this, that just I, the one you were dragged into? No, I was in a alleyway. Why were you in the is your life to sense? <laughs> Again, this is why I question! Hello? Oh yeah, this guy. Um, uh, wait, um, hold on a second. Is it, this is giving me memories. The vibrant beet color tent stands out amongst the various other tents. However, you don't see don't see the strange man that runs the shop. Well, not at first. The closer you get, you realize that Beats Boy was asleep face down on the pavement. At first, you're worried about it for his health, but after a moment, you could hear him snore. Beats, 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 he's dreaming. Pat, Pat, sleep well, Beats boy. He's he's deserved it. Why does he dream of beats? How does why does he sell beats? Why did why did he give you? Why did he give you a beat obsessed with, with, with <laughs> that one beat thing? Cookie was very interesting. Okay. Do you not remind me. Do bad. not remind me. That's if I think about it too hard, I I, I like the gag, the, the gag, gag reflex, reflex comes back. back. It's really not it wasn't good. as bad as the dirt that I've had, so it's good. No, listen, couple, my couple sand cakes your... were great. Your you know, I I propose. I propose that we use the Beats Boy cookie as like a scale of badness of like one Beats Boy cookie to ten Beats Boy cookies. That our Beats Boy can be at the end of the scale and the dirt whatever can be at the top depending on like your preference. On the scale of one to Beats Boy cookie, how insane are you feeling right now? <sighs> Solid seven. So, wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot going through my brain right now. If, like, I spoke all the things that were bouncing right now, I would be talking, like, a mile a minute. Ah, wonderful. Oh, no. Is that my dumb? Hmm? Oh. Uh, why is she sitting out? Why is she being freaky? Hi. Hi. You- I'm a little nervous after my last experience with you, ma'am. Ahem, hello. How are you? You, pro you approach the pink oh, tent. Oh, shoot. You Hold on, wait. I don't know where- <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> there we go. I clicked the chair <laughs> instead of the t trigger box. <laughs> you approach the pink tent that you have found yourselves in not too long ago. Out front, the madame is appearing to sweep some dust out of her tent. You assume that since there is a lot of foot traffic today, she's just trying to keep up and make sure that her stand looks inviting. Upon looking up, she notices you. She smiles and waves gently. My lovely wanderers, how have you been? Find any troops in my readings? You all glance between each other. Some of you shrugging. Dan appears to stand towards the back, not wanting to interact with the woman. In return, she doesn't pay him any mind. Not really. Upon hearing the answer, Madame pouts a little. Though <laughs> after a moment, she shrugs and continues with her sweeping. Uh, oh well, due time, I guess. You all tilt your head, a little surprised that she didn't seem to be upset that your readings haven't led anywhere immediately. She giggles at you before leaning over to place the broom off to the side. I know people find my practice strange, but I am aware of how fickle fate can be. My services only help guide those in the right direction. That just sounds like you don't want to take responsibility if things don't happen. She shot a glare at Dan after he muttered his response. Dan places his hands in the air in defense and decides to step further away. Madame refocuses on Marshy and Swan, a smile coming back to her lips. I do speak the truth, even if I'm not sure what it means. Just give it, just yet. Give it time. 
she hums. And when you do find that special someone, come back to me. I also provide wedding services. What? Wedding services? <laughs> she really has herself a prominent figure in the love market, huh? Okay. Time I will give. Suddenly, Madame grabs hold of Swan's hands. You turn to look at her, startled by the sudden contact. You only get even more frightened when you see the look on her face. Her eyes, they're trained on you. And her skin was a pale color, as if she's skin a ghost. Something dark is waiting for you. The hair on the back of your neck stands up, and you frankly look between Marcia and Dan. You then pointedly stare at Dan, as if to say, I thought she was just a person that does love readings? Dan shrugs at, the, at this glare. A friend can be far better than a foe. A friend can be a far better foe, she says, her voice hushed as she speaks. She glances between the group and leans closer to Swan. I hear them etching their way in. Do not let your thin skin be pierced by metal talons. Swan looks back at the woman, utterly horrified at what she said. Madam's eyes eventually close on their own, and she shakes her head as if to get rid of the thought. She loosens her head grip on your hands and gives you a soft pat before pulling away. Be careful on your adventures. Uh, thanks, I guess. Madam gives you a nod and without another word proceeds to walk back into her tent. She's quick on her feet, practically dis disappearing behind the pink curtains in mere moments. A breeze caresses your skin. And you can't help but shiver as you think back to the cryptid words and the gaze she kept to spawn in while she spoke. Yeah, no, she, she just freaks me out. What in the world? Hello? Yeah, <gasps> what happened? This um, was not... Uh, uh, good luck, I guess. The first... The first... The, the, uh, good, okay, good luck! Swan the can time, date the, the clown! The first time she gave me a reading! She was all like, oh, you might be single forever, I guess, have a family reading, or whatever, found family, and I'm like, okay, and now I'm being done, metal talons! Okay, listen, swaddlings, swaddlings, I, I, I understand that, that, that Strahd's weapon is, I guess, claw-like things, hey, yo. but that's a little wild, yeah. don't you think? <laughs> yeah, that, that seems a little too on the nose. I don't know, she told Catherine at one point that, like, a raven will be waiting for her, and, you know, like, my, my captain here. is Fair Raven, I'll oh. have you know. Oh. Oh? Huh? What? <laughs> That's crazy. That's nuts. That's actually nuts. That's I... actually... That's actually insane. <laughs> That is not good. Okay, I'm backing away slowly from her. I'm a little worried. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with <laughs> this man. None of that. That maybe she was just faking it. I mean, she did say due time, but due time doesn't mean anything. Anything can happen to you in due time. That's true. Hmm. It's like I'm saying I'm sorry. going to cough in the future. What? <laughs> sorry. What? Bro. I'm gonna cough in the future. Wow interesting reading people can be mean yes very good reading i guess i'm still scared of her damn my fate's in my own hands totally sure 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 what is oh, this bongo. bongo it's not a bongo wait is that a bongo that's a drum <gasps> oh it's a music stand you can't help but be attracted to the sound of music coming from the market stand as you approach you see all the different discs on this display a man is seen humming along to the music and tapping his fingers against the counter like he was playing the drums. Even though there was a pair of drums right next to him, he gives you a wide smile and waves you over. Hey there! Glad to see someone interested in these fine tunes. The man speaks, turning to grab a piece of paper. He then places it on the counter in front of you. It appears to be some sort of song list where each song has something to do with the theme of summer, having fun, and being true to oneself. This is the mix of the season. If you're ever interested, I'd be more than happy to make your own custom disc in the future. Oh, uh, next time we have a sleepover, we should get one of these. They have all playlists here. You all glance between each other before the sudden realization of, will there be a next time? Dan goes to grab the paper and nods the to the man, thanking him for the offer. No problem. Hey, I normally don't work the docks, but if you ever need some fine tunes, just ask, ask for Beats Guy in the music store in Erwin. I'll be there. What is with these stores and their wild nicknames? You all shrug before carrying on with the rest of your day. Beats boy? Beats guy? 
beats boy. They're meant to be. They're meant to be. <laughs> what if they're enemies? <gasps> they're mortal enemies! Oh my what if, gosh. What if he was mur No, I can't say that uh, because he was, he was literally straight sleeping <laughs> when we walked up. <laughs> What if he was a murdered Marcy? What if he was, Bro, what, we heard what if, him, what if, like, what if, what if, what if he was muttering What if he was in put a sleep. sleeping spell and now he can't wake up without no, a true can't. love's kiss? <gasps> oh, Swan. No. What? <laughs> I don't no. know. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No, nope. yeah. you don't get to do that one. Nope. He has, he, -uh. has a, he has a really good mustache, you have to admit. I hate mustaches, actually. Oh. Kind of looks like Danny DeVito. But no, thank you. If it was like a thing here. Okay. Y'all, y'all come across a small drink stand with a variety of different teas on display. You can't help but curiously glance between the drinks, noticing small black orbs in the bottom of some. The person running the stand finishes a drink and hands it out to someone before taking notice of you. They give a wide smile as they approach the front of the approach the front of the stand, greeting you all. Hi there. Just Hi let there. Me know what you want. Oh, sorry. I was gonna take. It's okay. Uh, it's... what is this? You point to the small balls that seem to be settling at the bottom of a few of the drinks. The person looks like they've unlocked some sort of you've unlocked some sort of secret phrase as their expression breaks into a wide grin. These are drink pearls. If you haven't ha tried them before, please allow me to give you some free samples. They ha they hum happily. You're un you're unable to say anything as they are already turning. Here, I'll make you my favorite. You watch as the person quickly makes work, humming an unknown song to the cells as they dash over to looks to be so uh, large containers. They scoop out some colorful drink pearls into a little cup before moving to fill it with what you presume to be some sort of tea. They quickly come back to the front and hand it to you. Y'all take turns taking a sip and wow, yeah, the tea was definitely really good. It was some sort of fruity mixture, though in the moment you couldn't really put your finger on what type of fruit it was. The drink pearls, while odd when first drinking, provide a nice little snack. They're a jelly consistency and appear to pop in your mouth, giving a refreshing blast of blueberry. The person watches you eagerly and is excited to see how much you're enjoying your beverage. They appear to do a fist bump. Yes! More people in the cult! They laughed in themselves. Come back any time! I'll have more for you to try. You can't help but feel like this person reminds you of someone. Who though? Oh. Hmm. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know either. Hmm. A very familiar person. Hmm. I think this is the end of the docks, though. So I I do like the pickle stands. Pickles are actually really oh, tasty. Oh, pickles! Heck yeah, bro! Pickles. Underrated snack. I got a gig of pickle. <laughs> wait, wait. Did you just wait? Wait. Did you just harvest it? No, I would never do that. Also, I'm pretty sure pickles are just cucumbers like put in vinegar for a long time. Did they grow here? Wait, wait, yeah, wait hold, hold on. on a second. <laughs> wait. What kind of like chemical reactions happen within you to it's turn magic. you into a pickle? No. <laughs> they turned me into they no, no, no. He, he turned himself no. into a pickle. No. Funniest stuff I've ever seen. No. <laughs> no. Terrible, awful, bad, bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's the only Oh, hey, I climbed story. that. What? I oh, climbed that. that. You I went all the way to the top of that? Okay, not like all the way to the top, but I went like pretty high. And up. you questioned me about my survival skills and Okay, sense. listen, I was with an expert. Yeah, I, mean, I think she was an extra stranger. Um, <laughs> I mean, she was technically also a stranger, but also not because she was Strahd's twin. So, oh, even better, someone just like Strahd. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> Twins She's are different, different in a lot of ways. Ones. Actually, she looked really similar. I don't. I think I was like in shock to not have realized. <laughs> mm -hmm. She does. She does flirt like him, though. There's that. Oh. So she's interested in you, I see. Wait, no, oh. no, 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 that does not mean that! He does that with everyone! What do you yeah, mean? Yeah, he does that with everyone. What is happening? Er no. <laughs> but his sister isn't just like him. Okay, so but I haven't seen her around I other people! I assume she what does do it I? with Have others! Have you ever seen them in the same room? 
Yeah, they might be the same like, person. Are same you person. suggesting Every that Sean <laughs> is Satea? Because that would be wild. I mean, you never know. Yet. Have you ever you seen them in the same room? I mean, listen, the amount of, the like, the gap of time he would have had to have, like, I guess, changed outfits and then have appeared would have been really minimal. <laughs> he is just... I don't know. That guy is... He interests me, but not in, like, a good way. I don't know. Your lieutenant is something else. Yeah. He made me really mad a lot at first, but I'm kind of a little more concerned about him these days. The clown! He came back! He came back! He came back! When did he come back? <laughs> okay. Yeah, anyway. I think we I mean, got- I, we kind of checked everything of out. Things, There's... I mean, we did we see the honey? Did we? I saw the honey earlier. Oh, you did. I feel like honey and pickles would be a strange combination. Oh no, that's nasty. Don't try it? it. Don't try it. Oh. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Guys! A voice calls from behind you. You all go to turn, only to see that Sunny was running quickly towards all of you. She's holding the little contraption from earlier. Uh, good, you're still here! Oh, Sunny, is something wrong? She looks frantically at the box before showing it to you. There was some sort of smoke coming from it. However, it didn't smell like smoke. The device seemed to blink a few times before any lights abruptly before any lights abruptly turned off. Everything was fine, but then the safety measures stopped responding. I had to manually shut it down, but now it keeps turning back on on its own. Okay, that's very concerning. I'm afraid if it keeps turning itself on, it might uh, detonate too early. That's even more concerning. <laughs> All three of you look at the box with wide eyes. What do you want us to do? Uh, I don't know. Sunny whines. I tried everything I knew, but it won't work for me. What did I do wrong? Well, you obviously had to do something. The fact that this thing could go off any moment and you were still in the middle of a festival was not a good idea. Dan frantically points towards the side beach, eagerly trying to get the group to move. Oh, let's get a move on! Okay! Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I have it! 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 What are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? I don't know. I did not have like a diffuse fireworks, you know, thing in guard training! Let's just get to the beach. Let's get to the beach. Okay! Damn it! Not again! Okay. Uh, what are we supposed right, to do? What are we supposed uh, to do? Uh, Everyone who's on the beach, you need to leave right now. Okay, there's no one here. It looks um, like that's uh, good. Just shoot, but wait, if okay. we start to panic, that's going to be really bad because then people are going to panic and trample each other, and that's extra bad. That's not yeah, but that's Where did you guys go? Um, up towards the front of the shack. That's where that's where we are. Uh, oh, uh, think, 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 think. I'm not good at thinking um, of extra situations. There are situations at all. I'm not really good at thinking on the spot, which is not really good for you. Okay. No. Okay. Um, faster. Okay. I'm trying. Yeah, there was definitely. Um, I mean, I uh, we knew that we don't. This does not need to be near people. But how far exactly can we go? There is literally just Arrowin. There was only Arrowin. Uh, there, it's like miles to yeah. the gate. There's um, no way we, to just. Could we throw it? I don't think throwing it into the ocean would do any good no, because what if it explodes and then like, and, like causes a shootout? That would be more disturbing. It's going to be too far to get over there right now. I'm just trying to do what I think is good for us. Okay, I just don't know what to do, and I'm just. Well, this is not it. We can't just throw it in the ocean uh, because it, it uh, might be strong uh, enough to like hurt things and people. And I don't know how things react in water. I know what to do. I know what to what? do. Wait. Get on the boat. Get on the boat. On the boat. Get on the okay. boat. Get on the okay. boat. Get on, get on the boat. Okay. Okay. I don't okay. think this is the right idea. Okay. It's fine. Wait, no, it's fine. fine. It's not the right idea. From the festival idea. now. No, we're, uh, we're away from the people. We're, we're away from you. That's <laughs> okay, great. Okay, that's okay. good. Okay. That's wonderful. We're away you know from the, the game. People. Don't, okay. uh, the, the game, what's it called? Uh, don't stop talking. You know what? Exposed. Whatever. That, let's just do that. We don't this have a manual. Use the <laughs> bomb. Cut the red we wire. Don't have a Wait, is there a manual like folded inside of the thing? Maybe? As heartwarming as your interactions have been, you still have a literal explosion waiting to happen in your tiny boat. You're all quickly <laughs> gather around the item, unsure what to do. Swan, you decide to open up the panel, quickly, ca quickly, causing Ganon Marshy to lean back. From inside the contraption, you see a bunch of wires. 
<laughs> oh god, that looks complicated. Do any of you have any experience with these types of things? You look between each other and there is a silent understanding that no! No, you don't. Awesome. Maybe we should try to cut one of the wires in a certain order? Dan suggests. Marshy gives him a frightened look. Isn't that a spy movie? Isn't- This isn't a spy movie, though, and we don't have the manual! Swan, you look down at the panel and glance over the different wires. You can see three prominent ones, a red, a green, and a blue. You also notice that the metal of, of, on the firework display case is almost decaying right before your eyes. Uh, wait! You see that the metal is decaying near the red wire. You need to stop it! Ah! Oh, I'm pulling this! You quickly go to pull the red wire, causing Dan and Marchie to brace themselves. When you finally get it, all of you stare at the device with wide eyes. A light on the box goes from red to yellow, then it turns green. You all give a collective oh. sigh of relief. Somehow, whatever Swan did was the right choice. That definitely seemed like it seems like a good sign. Huh. Okay, uh, I think I delayed it. There was like, uh, I, I, okay, I, I, a decay, a decay thing happening right here. Uh huh. Wait, let me see. Marshy moves closer to the box, her ears perked up. She glances down at it. Watching us as the metal box continues to decay, you realize you've seen this before. Back when you first came to Erwin, the cow had a similar effect. What was it called? Was it called withering? You haven't seen it since that then, but you feel your stomach churn when you're faced with this old enemy. Um, okay. No matter what we do, that stuff is going to keep eating the, the firework display. Marshy exclaims. Uh, oh, well, I think I, we need to make sure it doesn't shut, the, it shut this thing off completely. How about we pull out all the wires, Dan suggests, so it can stop the spread of whatever that is. Huh? What if we pull the wrong wire and it causes something to explode? Uh. Marshy pushes her way forward towards the small box and goes to grab all the wires. Swan, you try to dodge, but it's too late. She manages to grab hold, and with a firm pull, she manages to take the wires with her. Sparks fly around in the area, and our first stands up from the slight electric shock. The three of you stand in silence as you watch the device lights go off, and the decaying continues to advance. Relief swarms your body with a green light when the green light comes on. I totally solved it! You all give a big sigh of relief, happy that the situation is now over. But the green light begins to blink, and what is that? Is oh. it? Is it making a beeping noise? Get off the ship! Get off the get ship! Off the get off the ship! Bring it off! Oh, salt water. Oh. Oh, the boat. Okay, cool. <laughs> little boat didn't actually. Okay, cool. Um, I think we. I think we had a grand showing. <laughs> hey, Lord, yeah, this fun. bun is really, really well made. It's still a blaze. Pluto, Pluto, are you fine? Pluto's okay. Pluto, Pluto is having a good. Pluto, why are you dancing? Is that dancing? They're having a great time. They're having <laughs> such a good time. Okay. Okay, hold on. <sighs> what is my hair singed? We good? Um, Only a little bit at the tips. Okay, great. Oh, your bun's still intact. That's kind of good. Oh, that's honestly kind of impressive. Don't. Yeah, hold on. Maybe. All right. Maybe pick it. Oh. Wait, is that a mirror and Strahd? Huh? Wait. Hey. It is! Amir and Strahd stand near the shoreline. Their eyes still linger on the impressive firework display you've created for the festival. As soon as you got closer, you notice that Amir has reached his hand up to Strahd's. Strahd glances up at the larger Undanian, and both Dan, both Swan and Dan feel their own hearts begin to beat quickly. Uh! I! Both of your voices overlap each other as you begin to speak. Swan and Dan, you attempt to go towards the pair. However, Marchie follows after the two of you, going to grab at your shoulders to stop you from getting closer. She hushes you. I think it'll be nice to let them have their moment. Marshy hums. So instead of approaching Strahd and Amir, you sit idly by. Watch as the two men begin to look at each other, not caring about the world around them. Luckily, since you have gotten closer, you can hear the conversation. What are you doing? Strahd asks hesitantly, however, not pulling away. His face appears to flush a bright red, which causes Amir to smile a bit. I just like how the fireworks reflect on your eyes. Emir hums gently to the other. That This only causes the lieutenant's face to grow redder. 
Amir can't help but give him a, sm all smi a soft smile. Too much. The two men stood in silence, looking at one another. Eventually, Amir lets out a gentle sigh. I'm sorry. I, I, I need to get something off my chest. Hmm? Amir appears to pull Strahd closer to him, turning his body almost effortlessly. He towers over Strahd, but continues to hold his hands like he is the most precious thing in the world. Ever since you've gifted me that rock, I've, I've been thinking. His voice rumbles in his chest. As much as I try to keep pushing it off and like, I, I know I shouldn't push, but God, Strahd, I'm starting to fry like a fish here. What do you mean? Strahd raises an eyebrow, an apprehensive smile on his lips. He can't help but try to conceal a laugh. This. Us? I know I know, I shouldn't. I, I know this is probably just all in my head, but... Ever since I've come here, you've been the only person I've ever felt so at home with. When you avoided me, I was so heartbroken. I thought, man, I never actually get going to get a chance to tell him. But then you came back, and you started to hang out with me again, and I was reminded I need to tell him. Strad's eyes flicker from side to side, appearing to be more awkward than he's ever looked. Tell me what? Amir's expression softens, as if it was obvious what he was going to say next, which it was to everyone else but them. I think I th that I think I'm in love with you. Oh, 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 oh! Swan and Dan, you're trying your best to be quiet. You really are. But Swan, you can't help but slap at Dan's shoulder with excitement. <laughs> Silence fills the, air, fill, fills the air between the two of them once more. As Strahd looks up in Amir's eyes, there's a prominent blush on Amir's face now, and his tail appears to sway from side to side. Though, when the silence continues for too long, he draws in on himself. You don't have to feel the same way, Amir says quickly, doing damage control. I completely understand, I just- Shut up. Strahd's voice cuts in. Amir's fins flicker, and he gives him a confused expression. However, this is quickly cut short as Strahd lunged upward to catch the other's lips in a tender kiss. <gasps> hey, yo! Marshy makes sure to cover both of them now, <laughs> reminding the two of you not to ruin the moment for them. Amir appears to brace himself, himself a moment, not expecting the other to be so forward. However, he soon eases his body into the kiss. He brings Strahd closer to him, closing his eyes. Strahd's arms come up to wrap around the other's neck, and for a moment, the word, world felt silent. The smoke from the explosion, the bustling crowds, all of it faded away. They held the kiss for as long as they could without breath, before pulling away. It was Strahd who looked up at him, waiting for the other to open his eyes. Swan, you've never seen him this happy. As Amir opens his eyes, only holding love in them, a chilly wind comes across the beach. It blows Strahd's hair in a way that causes the strands to cover his face. He glances to his side to fix it, but when he's looking up at the city, at the people, the silent moment disappeared. Strahd's eyes darken, as if suddenly recognizing what he had done. Amir attempts to try to kiss him again, but Strahd... He pulls away. You can only barely hear what he says next. I can't do this to you. Amir's eyes widen and his fins lower. You can tell he tries to say something, anything, really, but whatever words he attempts to get out, they don't make it past his lips. Strahd's eyes darken with guilt, and he glances away from the larger man. His hands pull off from um, his face like he had burned himself on hot coals. I'm... I'm sorry. Strahd's voice uncharacteristically quivers. As Amir reaches out to place a hand on his arm, the lieutenant pulls away. As the sun lowers in the sky, Strahd takes off down the beach, quickly maneuvering around the crowds in order to avoid him. Strahd? You hear Amir call out. Wait, Sea Star, it's okay! Amir's voice rasps in a way that sounds like he's been torn from the inside out. Amir starts to go after Strahd, but they are both soon lost in the crowd of people. No. Oh. When I thought we were about to celebrate. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't have done that. But, I mean, you weren't... I wasn't That was wrong. the happiest I've ever seen him. Why did he pull away? I don't know. It just makes me think about what he said before when I talked to him before we left for the festival. He said he was getting too comfortable. That's why he didn't want to... What? 
don't know. It's why he didn't want to hang out with Amir, I guess. It's, he said he wasn't going to. He said that he was getting too comfortable, but he shouldn't. Why is he holding himself back? I wish I can tell you. I can only relate with him so much. Okay. Well... Maybe we can try to enjoy the festivities a little bit more. Yeah. I mean, if I only have you for, you know, the rest of this day and you're leaving soon, hell yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's go. Okay. Let's go.